Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include free ebook Democracy in a Federalised Europe. And Democracy in a Federalised Europe, we are already in a federal Europe, but the politicians forgot to tell us. A quarter of all babies born in the UK are to migrant mothers. And Baby Boom will see number of school children in England soar by one million over the next decade. Plus, revealed the hidden peril of wind turbines that catch fire. It's Friday, 18th of July. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, top story from our homepage. A free ebook, Democracy in a Federalised Europe. This free ebook, written by Peter Brown, is a series of short chapters describing the very real potential for how the British and other European peoples will be subject to democracy under European law in a formalised European state if the UK should be foolish enough to embark on such an exercise. It is written from the perspective of the ordinary man in the street, and Peter says, It is not intended as a treatise in law, I am not qualified to write one, but it is factual. None of it is fantasy, and it is almost entirely part of EU law now. I have included one or two possible scenarios that illustrate the likely extension of the way that this existing law could be applied. Those scenarios are formed from my own opinion, but the references provided can be checked by anyone from official EU documents available on the internet. Now, download the ebook now from our website or via the links below. Democracy in a federal Europe? We are already in a federal Europe, but the politicians forgot to tell us. The United Kingdom is not just in danger of being drawn into a federalised Europe, we are already there, and despite the protestations of the government, it has been done entirely with the connivance of all successive governments since the 1972 European Communities Act and its precursors. Under the 30 Years Rule, a document, Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048 from 1971, which is available in our 1972 et al. section of the website, but previously denied to the public, now shows that right from the point of applying to join, the full implications of joining the then European community has always been known by the government, and that its sole intention was to bring Europe into a federal state. Now, with each successive government, politicians have been instructed not to say anything that will show Europe in a bad light. The original architect of the plan, Jean Monnet, wrote to a friend on 30th of April 1952 and said, Europe's nations should be guided towards the superstate without their people understanding what is happening. This can be accomplished by successive steps, each disguised as having an economic purpose, but which will eventually and irreversibly lead to federation. A quarter of all babies born in the UK are to migrant mothers. More than a quarter of babies born in Britain last year were to migrant mothers, figures revealed yesterday. The Office of National Statistics reported that of the 698,512 live births last year, 26.5% or 185,105 were to mothers born outside the UK. In 2003, the figure was 18.6% and only 11.6% in 1990. Recent ONS data showed that mass migration sent Britain's population soaring above 64 million for the first time, with the country gaining an extra 400,000 people from 2012 to 2013. The population has grown twice as fast as the rest of Europe over the past decade, gaining as many people in that time as in the entire previous generation. UK Independence Party MEP Tim Aker said, Schools, hospitals and housing are all reaching breaking point with the UK's huge surge in population. Baby boom will see number of school children in England soar by one million over the next decade. In the next 10 years, the number of school children will top 8 million by 2023. 
There will be around 4.7 million pupils in state primary schools. At the same time, the number of secondary school children will hit 3.2 million. Boom will increase pressure on schools already under growing strain. An extra 256,000 primary and secondary school places are already needed now, and the number of pupils in England's schools is expected to boom by more than a million in just 10 years, official forecasts suggested today. The government statistics estimate that in the next 10 years, the number of school children will top 8 million, the highest level in almost half a century. And by 2023, it is projected that there will be around 4.6 million pupils in state primary school, 9% higher than in 2014. Revealed the hidden peril of wind turbines that catch fire. Wind turbines are catching fire 10 times more frequently than the industry admits, a detailed study has revealed, and the toxic fumes released are damaging the wind power industry's green credentials. The study by Imperial College London and Edinburgh University and Sweden's SP Technical Research Institute found that fires are the second biggest cause of wind turbine accidents after blade failure. And once a turbine catches fire, it's almost impossible to put it out due to its height and often remote location. The study in the journal Fire Safety Science said, Incidents of wind turbines catching fire are a big problem that is not currently being fully reported. Ten times more fires are happening than are being reported. Instead of an average 11.7 fires each year, which is what is reported publicly, the researchers estimate that more than 117 separate fires are breaking out in turbines annually. Now, for those that have been enjoying the nightly news video blog, I have some sad news. It is with regret that we are going to stop the nightly news video for the time being. As you know, we have some serious funding issues, which has left us strapped for cash and more to the point, human resources. The team have needed to find occupation elsewhere. And whilst we continue to try to maintain the services that we know you value so much, we can only do so much with the voluntary support that we have. We will be continuing to maintain a vibrant, diverse mix of European Union news on our website, and I must bring attention and credit to the superb work that altruistic volunteer Peter Brown has been doing. This week, I have been working with Peter, taking him through the technicalities of the website and our research tools, and Peter is taking over the role from Andrew Fear, who has had to leave us to find work elsewhere. Sue Doidge, our administrator, has been continuing to work with me part-time voluntarily and is instrumental in getting this daily news bulletin out to you each day. We are already in touch with 48 Eurosceptic MEPs and have begun a dialogue. You could really help us a great deal by contacting your regional MEPs directly and telling them what you think and feel about the work the unit does and encouraging them to work with us and help fund us going forward. Of course, also making a PayPal script to us would be so valuable, and to those that have done so already, we thank you. Finally, we will be continuing with our live table talk shows. These will be moved to the later time of 7pm in the evening, and the details will be announced via the website and in this daily news bulletin. Finally, thank you, all of you, for your help and your support. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. We'll see you soon.